Enemy A is pretty good. All right, stream time. dealing with today. Oh yeah, that's right. Hell. Okay. I'm fairly short. Short. Why? Feel short? No. I'm fairly sure that actual free DOS thing to debug this. I think it might chat up on my other computer, which I'm using IRC, but I'm not sure if this one works well. Come on, logging into my own computer. I'm going to close my blinds. Because it's getting cold. And you know what you do when you get cold? You try to get warm. And you know what you do when you try to get warm? Uh, I'll try some more. Come on, chat, pop out. There we go. I don't want to... Uh, maybe I should like mute myself when I'm going to do loud noises like that. Nah. Okay. QMU time. That's uh. uh just leave that to be the trash workspace. And we will create a new one. Do we have QMU installed? Nope. Okay. It feels like really bad to just QMU in a VM, but since we're going to emulate this, it should be fine. MU system is that I three eighty six? I think it's that. Or is this it? Okay, yeah. Let's get this and Is there a vert IO? No, there's not. There's not going to be a vert IO packet driver. What are you talking about? Okay, let's do that. Uh, do we have the FreeDOS CD and stuff? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that sounded like I was reading chat, but I wasn't. This is like a dead stream. Everyone's this is outside of everyone's time zone. Nobody's here. Which is good because that means I can just mess around. I actually have a free DOS VM already sitting here, which means I probably already have instructions for setting it up. Um, which means I'm probably going to have to find them on my computer. Shit. Ah, Alright. Why 
Okay, I have notes about how to do DOS stuff somewhere, I swear. Set up notes. It's not there. Is it in DOS? I had a DOS. Oh no! Uh, was it somewhere? Alright, there's like five places. Three computers it can be on. Okay, um. Because it had some pretty important stuff on it. Oh, did I put it with the VM? Hang on a second. I might have put it with the VM because I knew I would have lost it. Gee, is it hot in here for anyone else? Just me? Okay. Home, VM, CD, scripts, VDOS. Alright. Okay, so I found, like, the stuff I need to use for QMU, and it has, like, the instructions. I wrote them down on the equivalent of the back of a digital napkin, but I have found them. Okay, so what do we need to do? Um, let's create a QMU image. You know what? Let's make a QMU folder. Um, QMU image. Help. We'll create a cow. I don't know how to do that. Because all my images have been using like raw disk. How much space do I have? Alright, gotcha. So it would be crate, yeah. Crate, format, options, file name, size. Okay, so file name, options, size. You system. Okay, um, this dot image. Sure, four gig, that's fine, right? The DOS. You know what? This is the wrong command. I got this. I've used Linux for... Hey, you sad guy a lot. What's up? I didn't know you'd be up around this time. I tried to... I tried to stealth stream it. Because this is like... A two hour time block I have. This is, uh... This is the stream where... Things get real. Because I actually have to use FreeDOS instead of DOSBox, because DOSBox doesn't have a good debugger for this, because this is now me debugging DOS. You got up and sketched a few things? Nice, what did you sketch? Alright, so we're going to create a start folder. Six or three eighty six. I'll do a four eighty six with one hundred twenty eight mega RAM.
That's okay. Should I yell? Would that help? I feel like yelling would help. Oh shit, you're right. This isn't Dungeon Crawl. I knew I forgot something. Dang, dude. Thanks. Oof. Okay. Happens to everyone all the time. Yes, but I hold myself to a better standard than everyone else. All those other Twitch streamers that aren't me. You know what, I can do this on my other computer. Because my main computer is slow on Twitch, because Twitch's page is full of JavaScript and trash. And fast web pages are no longer a thing. I'm not logged in on that computer, you know what? I'm okay with that. Channel. I should put up the uh, difficult thing. And let's just do that. Okay, that's fixed. And you know what, next time I see that, the fixing Twitch category thing, I'll know what to do. Okay, back to QMU. Syntax of NetDev user. Yeah, we want to use E100. There. Will it just generate a random Mac? Do I have to set the Mac address? It doesn't actually matter here because I'm using user networking. The MAC address does not matter. Okay, is that going to work? Right. 
is it? Oh, it's E1000. Gotcha. Okay. Should actually just be a USB device then. Oh, that is the second one. And I want to set that to read only. Okay, and <coughs> stop wasting time on DOS learn Python, but I know Python. Hi, Batstrav. Uh, do you know Python? Python and Windows is the best setup. Cool, what do you make?
kayak gue I support Microsoft. Windows is better than any Libra OS. You know what? That is some A plus trolling, but you have to do better. Because real trolls don't use specific terms like Libra. It has driver issues and no work from communities. Yeah, I get ya. Also, they don't earn much profit. That that is true. If you if you want to do profit, you would uh, sell Linux. Uh, Have you seen Windows 10? It's got some pretty cool features. Hi guys. Is it? No. So loud there. Let me talk Windows 10 to you. That, that can be cool, man. I'm trying to add a USB drive to QMU. Is it like talking dirty to you? No. Nah. I probably should have used a Windows VM, but I don't have a license for it, so... You know. I was thinking of buying another Windows license, actually. So I think you should probably talk me out of that. Because I have, like, two computers, and I want to run Windows on both of them. Does that make sense? Does it make sense? Hopefully Microsoft will take over Linux. Linux is disrupting decision making. Is it disrupting decision making? Because like, I've had a real hard time trying to get people to use Linux. What's been happening on your end? USB... This doesn't have a USB... USB storage? Is that what it is? It might be USB storage. Uh, I mean, iOS server is better than any Linux server. Is it? Tell me more. Because I haven't really heard much uh, about iOS. Device. Uh, USB storage. Oh, I need to enable USB, don't I? Drive property. Ooh, this documentation is getting me. So I'm installing FreeDOS. Um, my god, this music is a bit loud. What the hell? Why am I need noticing it now? Um, and the manual of FreeDOS, uh, not FreeDOS, QMU is a little tricky. I think it might be Drive like that. Are you kidding? Microsoft iOS is the most popular server along with all Office products plus services. Yeah. That is correct. 100%. You know, I was trying to set up a server the other day. I asked for Linux, and it was like, they're like, what What the hell is Linux? You know how hard it is to get a Linux server these days? Like a VPS or anything? Can I find value? So, is that going to connect to whatever drive I set up there?
ID equals uh, USB one, I guess. Drive equals USB one. So if I do that, will that work? Block node is read only. So I need to set the uh, the drive parameter media. If you want VPS and all, get Microsoft Azure. Linux distros will die soon. Yeah, but have you seen how expansive Azure is? I mean, I guess in the next five, Y Linux will be gone. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the projection. Drive equals stick. Ah, so I use the if equals none and drive equals stick. Gotcha. Wait. Yes. I gotcha. Can I boot from USB? Yeah! Check this out, my dude. I think. It looks like it... Nope, it's just going a little bit slow. Um... Why is it going so slow? Ah, because it's emulating it. Alright. It's not using KVM, and I don't have nested KVM. So we're going to have to install it like a normal person. I hope my stream's not like dying because of this. Okay. Oh my god. Let me fucking drag everything. What is wrong with you, QMU? Oh, I was grabbed. Okay, that feels a lot better. English. Yes. Drive D. I don't want it to be drive D. I want it to be drive C. Can we install to drive D? Does it support that? Because whenever I've installed anything to drive D with anything DOS related or Linux related, it has always been a hell shot. Linus, Trollworlds, Richard Storman were all edutudes wanting some hypothetical freedom. Yeah, uh, do you actually have anything to talk about? Because there's a lot of things you could be talking about. Like besides just saying random things and then moving on, even when I try to engage. Like there's a lot of discussion, there's a lot of nuanced discussion to be had here. And you've decided that instead of that, we're just going to not have it. Like, I don't want to be a bummer, but it's really clogging up my chat, dude. And I vow to hypothetically fix that as soon as I get the stream chat open. I got this. Sorry, I try to teach people to use Windows. I don't usually converse with Linux users. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I asked you about Windows, if you wanted to talk about any specific things about it you like, like IIS or anything in Windows 10, but... you want to send me a Windows license and I can stream a VM of that? That'd be pretty cool.
I just I don't have the actual like money to stream in a Windows VM. Setting DOS pulse system. Did I just did I kill my drive? Okay, Windows equals safer, secure, faster, seventy percent market share, profit oriented. Yeah. Okay, but okay, so look at it like this. I'm streaming development here, and I want to run my development in a VM, but it really costs a lot to get a Windows license to run in a VM. This is not petitioning drive D. Invalid drive designation? Okay, let's just return to DOS here. to manually format the drive. Drive not ready. Not cool. Is it E drive? A drive? Oh god. F disk D? Okay. I can automate this. Alright, create a DOS petition. Create a primary DOS petition. Partition 1 is on C drive, no space. Alright, so do I have to do like 2? Oof. This is... Current fixed disk drive. So drive 2. Invalid drive designation. Oh, this is... Uh, F disk drive. What am I, like, I know I'm just burning time trying to get this to work. Petitioning with F disk in FreeDOS. Okay. F disk. I think there's a command to show disks. Status dump. Auto drive. But I want to use, like, the proper drive. Jimmy Jinx finally does. I know, right? Except it's not installing. G bless MSFT. I'm not, I'm using, I'm not using MS-DOS, though. So... Just using DOS clones. If you mail me a copy of MS DOS, I will use it. But you'll also have to guess my address. So just like, I'm doing it wrong. No, I don't want to do it wrong. Does it have to be MS DOS? Why? Okay, I'm actually just going to cheat, and I'm going to just f-disk. Oh, I can't f-disk the image here. I remember QMU, it was an absolute nightmare. 
when did you last use it and what for? Because I use it as like all my VM stuff and it works really well for me. Vert resize, is that what I want? No. GME image resize. So that uses libvert. Can I use gparted on it? Oh no. Um, QME drive order. I guess the main drive is always C drive, maybe? Running my entire drive in a VM to recover some things. Yeah, that sounds painful. Why would you do that? Um, I haven't heard of that being the way to recover files. Oh! Are you using Windows on the drive? With like some kind of BitLocker encryption or something? Um, disk image. Oh, it's not raw, it's QCOW2. What the actual hell? What am I doing? Image. That would explain why that's broken. How could you forget QCOW? Uh, quite easily because I never use QCOW. There was actually a fine because I have a text file with all common commands. Yeah, recovering data is trashed here. Oh. No! Why is it changing language as I hit down? That's pretty cool, but also not what I want. But also cool. Networking recovery. Hmm. How does that work? Invalid. I block myself out of a dedicated machine. Okay, so I'm just thinking you had like QMU using a disk image, but were you using like QMU with an actual VM that was running somewhere? Right. You went to recovery Linux. Oh, and you ran QMU to boot into... But why couldn't you just boot it? If you could boot it in QMU, but not... Did not... I'm actually like really confused now, because it seems to me like... Booting it in QMU and booting it normally would be identical. It was remotely and I can boot to a Linux recovery machine. Oh. That's cool. Oh my god, did I do something? Oh no, I didn't. I can only RDP the machine. Alright, that makes sense. That's really creative. I probably would not have done that. So, I have a QCOW here, and it is not doing what it needs to do. It took three minutes to boot in QMU. Ouch. Uh, index. Can I change? What is happening here? Sounds like Windows normally. I don't think... Oh, did you boot Windows in QMU? 
My god, does that work? QMU NBD. Oh. QMU image. Bruh, Windows server is so blazing fast. Really? What do you run on the Windows server? Just like... Cause has not had good experiences with Windows. Are you effing kidding me? You know what? I deserve this. I really deserve this because... I feel like such an idiot now. And I'm just going to reread the file just to check. Yep. Look, I forgot the slash here. Wow. Isn't that fantastic? Who would have thought that... Uh, slamming my car's steering wheel in anger. Oh. Oh, I'm so angry. Okay, so that's actually good. It's good for Bitcoin and it's good for me. I built Windows drivers to fill, fill a certain package. Nice! How's that? What type of uh, interface is that? Win APA is so painful but I'm only used to it. Only used to it? Or are you used to only it? I've only messed around with the Linux kernel stuff. Boot menu on. Okay, so I should be able to hit F10 or something. Press escape for boot menu. It boots up so fast. Linux would be cheaper and easier to build kernel drivers for. Ah, uh, I'd love to agree with that. Um, a legal petition table. Drive one sector one. Okay, but. If your drivers are not integrated into the Linux upstream and you want to upgrade Linux versions, then your drivers are going to break because Linux doesn't provide a stable kernel interface. <laughs> you literally paid a thousand dollars for it, she said. Ouch. That's no good. Okay, so it's going to petition now. Just to run a driver or create one? You paid a shitty cert to run a driver on Windows. Oh. Oh, because you would have secure boot now. And secure boot is like, nah, I only want to run signed drivers. Ouch, dude. Ow. Jesus Christ, that's... I feel so bad about that. Yeah. It's... Secure boot something that can be done right, but... It's really strange that Windows doesn't let you, like... They removed hooking in drivers? Um, it's really strange that Windows doesn't let you add your own certificates for, like, drivers and stuff. I guess they could argue that you know, malware could do that, but I don't know. <sighs> Did you, you could have, no, maybe booting legacy wouldn't work. You'd have to reinstall it. What do you mean they removed hooking in drivers? Do you mean debug hooking? You had to use Intel virtualization to hook. I don't quite understand what hooking is. Because when I think of hooking, I'm thinking of having kernel APIs and... Um, oh, hang on. Hooking is... Yeah. I vaguely remember that because hooking is not the kernel, it's the Win32 API. 
That's user space. No space to create a DOS petition. There's already one there. Yeah, I've heard they did that since like Win 9X or something. They've always hated the hooking because the virus software would hook into it and just kill your computer. Hooking user space in kernel. Yeah, in Linux it's a lot easier to do that because there's no intermediate between user space API and the kernel. Because it just be like, hey, we we just edit the syscalls. But it comes with its own share of problems. Linux like introduced like a new syscall clone for when APA is just weird with the naming scheme and style of it. Yeah. It was kind of good intention to just to use Hungarian notation like that, but Oh no, I didn't want to return to DOS. Okay, I guess I'm rebooting. The legal petition table. Did I break the QCOW? I think I might have broken the QCOW. No, I don't want to grab. <laughs> the cow, it always gets broken. You are a smart person to code in kernel. Not really. It's not a QCOW, it's a QMU copy on write thing. The kernel is just, like, below user space. Yeah! You can't get away with just... writing shitty C code. No, I didn't want to return to DOS. Why did I hit enter twice? Okay. I can't believe that I'm actually like resetting for the third time because I failed to hit install when it asked me to. Jesus Christ. Okay. Focus. I know how to install FreeDOS. I've trained for this. Blue screens of death are generally also worked as contractor for that game AC. I don't know what an AC is. <laughs> Duke YouTube stream. 10 minutes finding missing slash. 20 minutes press enter key the right number of times. Yeah. Anti cheat. Ooh. Don't, doesn't in Windows, they, like, create kernel drivers for anti-cheat? Because that's actually insane to me. What the hell? Hey, near re can counter near re scene counter I prefer the term rootkit. <laughs> yeah. I can understand it, but at the same time, it's like, I'd probably buy like a, I wouldn't mix gaming with like serious business then if they're going to install a kernel driver. I'm waiting for the, the point for it to get like that on Linux, but it'd be really hard for Valve to do that because, or Valve or any kind of employee, uh, any kind of company, sorry because of the kernel AVI just changing and it breaking all the time and it would really upset people. Unless it was like an open source thing with like a like a shim. 
They just keep escalating the permission level. Fortnite making Windrove people rich right now. That's crazy. Is that where I should go, Cos? Should I be doing this? I feel like this is something I could do. No? Maybe I should write the cheats instead, even though that's like illegal. You won't get any dough, come on. Yeah. I guess the hard problem about writing cheats is that you'd have to simultaneously have and I'm like the effort to write the cheats but also not care about getting banned from the game. First they wrote dumb VMs and they moved to messing around the process security architectures from a system service and they moved on to kernel drivers and now they're patching slash scanning the NT kernel. What the fuck? My god. That freaks me out because of things like Valve Anti-Cheat where it like delays you like, if it sees something wrong with your kernel, it just bans you two weeks later and you're like, but dude, I want to play my games. Okay, Fridos, you do not back his fake news. You know why Windows updates aren't coming out, right? Windows updates aren't coming out. They're always coming out for me. I run, like, Windows Insider on a VM, though, and I check it now and then. It's like a weird science project. Battle.i won't update the driver, so Microsoft has to delay their updates. VAC is nothing other than a signature check. Yeah, isn't it? That's... I feel like I'm just listening to like horror stories from Windows while trying to set up DOS and failing because I'm not reading it. Status. It keeps saying it's not creating the correct petition table, so I'm starting to think that. Uh, what do we got here? Let me type in this Twitter URL. GSOD. Green screen of death? That is... That is hell. That's nightmare fuel. Okay, so I'm just gonna try one more time and I think I'm just fucked up with my partitioning scheme because it's not working and nothing illegal petition table 50 sector 1 okay so what we're going to do is uh, okay how do we make a petition I'm just going to quick the F disk check F disk that is like horror stories. I get mad when like a package needs a newer version of Python and then I see what you guys are posting about Win Microsoft needing to block their updates because anti-cheat are doing scanning of the kernel and I'm like what the f what is happening over there? I feel like an idiot for not knowing any of this when Microsoft makes it hard to make anti-cheat. Hmm. Is that Microsoft's fault? Because... Like, even assuming if the if the NT kernel was open source and anti-DL and all that, they just... have to deal with uh, the same amount of issues.
I'm not saying open source, but add more features. No, I get it, but I mean, like, if it's a game of cat and mouse... They phased out NT APIs in the mid-2000s for the universal driver layer. Useful APIs are marked as deprecated. What? So, but don't you have to program... Do you mean the user space and... There's like three levels of APIs here. There's the Win32 API, there's the NT API and user space, and then there's the kernel, and then there's the driver API. Which one are you talking about being deprecated? Or is this just something I can't understand because I live in Linux land? Good APIs are hidden and undocumented. NTOS kernel symbols. So, the internal routines of the NT kernel. Things you would hook if you were to, like, say... Not internal? Do you mean, like, the stuff NT DLL uses, the syscalls? Ah, so the NT API, which is undocumented and hidden, because you only get to access the user space API. And you can't access that in the actual drivers? What the hell? How do you do a... How would you do a driver thing like that? How would you make drivers when you don't have... Well, I suppose you wouldn't have to have that. I suppose drivers would just exist as some kind of object that the kernel would use. Oh, doggy. Barking all day. Yeah, it would be complicated because, like, the syscalls and the stuff change from, like, release to release. They just don't care. Yeah, maybe I need extended options for this. Okay, do you want to use large disk FAT32? Yep. MBR maintenance, that sounds like what I want. Um, I don't know what this is, but okay. Is that what I want? There's hackers find hidden ways to diverse around checks and hooks of anti. So you're saying there's... Are you saying they've created ways or there are ways that are already there but hidden? Undocumented ways. Why would Microsoft put those there? Oh, I suppose for like their system stuff like Windows Defender and that kind of crap. Drive area not ready. Okay, so I'm gonna reboot now and hope that, that fixes it. I don't know if that's even helpful, but the next step is for me to not use QCAL and to just, oh! It seems to have worked a little bit, maybe? In the early 2000s, you could mess around with device objects and NT-APIs within your driver. Now they have to follow the Windows driver model where they hide all this cool stuff behind a static library. Jimmy Jinx says they also find exploits in valid third-party drivers and use them to inject modules in games. Holy shit. That, sound, that sounds like something you'd want to use for, like... For like, uh... You know... Malware. Stealing stuff. Not video games. Yeah, so the... Windows driver model came out with Vista, didn't it?
crate thread is also a thing they try to get around by hijacking threads of the game. Wait, did Windows 10 introduce a new driver API? What? It doesn't sound right. I knew that with uh, Vista and onwards, they had to do a new API, and that's why all the drivers, like, suck shit. I remember just looking at how to like create hacks for games when I was a Windows user and it just usually involved uh, injecting uh, DLLs and creating processes and doing DLL main and stuff like that, but that's as far as I got. Okay. Full application in full installation. Yes. I had a plain DOS thing. Yes, install. We're installing! It's happening! Oh, I'm so proud of myself. I give myself a pat on the back, but I'm not sure how long this is going to take. Um, you got to block memory access and prevent common functions to create new threads. So, fake resource stuff so the code doesn't create new threads. I should probably update my Linux kernel now. I feel a little bit spooked. I feel rattled knowing that this exists. It's just bizarre to me that patch guard exists because it's like if you have root on a computer you can probably just do what you want like what's Microsoft gonna do are they gonna report you well I guess it is illegal to reverse engineer and modify Windows maybe they'll revoke your Windows license gonna take a while. Alright, so while that's cooking, I'm just gonna head on back to the problem I've been having, which is fitting a TCP stack into 64k seems to break things. Okay, so Ubuntu, I would really like if you didn't automatically update Slurp. Okay. Oh, this isn't Z shell. Just prevent malware from, say, patching the system call table to hijack menu memory allocations and steal user data. Yeah, but they already have kernel access. I just feel like there's like some weird threat model going on here that I don't understand. Because as far as I'm concerned, in my simple Linux land, if you have like the ability to load kernel modules, you're kind of screwed. Okay, let's see. I have to actually take some notes as to why this is broken. Oh god. Yeah, that needs to be open. In simple Linux land, you have struct randomization to prevent foreign code from being injected. Yeah? Doesn't Windows have that? Oh, it's still playing. Windows can't have that because they care about binary compatibility. Are you kidding? But they're... Oh, binary driver compatibility. 
sorry, I was thinking of like, you have all these undocumented functions and you have this kernel. It's just so weird to me that they don't have the user uh, user space section of it stable, but they have the driver section stable. That just rattles me so hard. Hey, good cheeseburgers. Backwards compatibility needs to stop at some point, hey? Yeah, but drivers are a special case. Because they get written once by manufacturers and the manufacturers are like, sorry. You are impressed with my viewer attraction abilities? I think I posted it on Mastodon and now a ton of Mastodon people have seen it. I'm not sure. Maybe you should stream programming cars. I find it weird to think that it's a good idea to link drivers into the damn kernel and claim your small ugly kernel is millions of lines because of third party drivers. Yeah. Linux is uh, strange when it comes to its driver model. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what driver model? The driver model where you just link shit into the kernel. Yeah. The, uh, the driver model where you hope that... Well, the kernel needs to export the symbols. Yeah, man. Just... Load some shared objects that use kernel libraries and the kernel will be like, Yeah, I'll load that. That's fine. Why not? I mean, there's secure boot as well. So I guess in theory you can be like, sign modules. No abstraction, no APIs, no real object tables. Yeah, no, there is nothing. There is just, there is no API for Linux drivers, you just, it is frustrating if you want to create a driver that works for like more than two releases because they change the interfaces and it just breaks. And no one's happy. I forgot to press that button. You found me by discovery on Twitch? Where it wasn't a Mastodon or an old character from a Power Rangers Kappa? Uh, probably. Isn't Linus responsible for driver stuff? Uh, no, you can write your own kernel driver if you want. I'll just do a quick detour here. So, <coughs> do I have user source? So I have Linux installed in this, and if I want to write a driver, I just like, go to my user source. And uh, I just write against this. So I'd be like, hey, um, I want to write a driver that uses the uh, tracing API. This is a really bad example. And they just give you all this junk and you write against it. And they give you like, all the symbols here in the kernel especially for other drivers and some of them have export symbol which means you can use them in your proprietary application and some of them have export symbol GPL which means you can only use it if you're writing a GPL code which is weird and strangely in legal grey territory 
And so each kernel release, <laughs> GPL null byte, not really. Yeah, they fixed that. But that did actually happen. If you're just joking. But yeah, that's how you write them drivers. And every kernel update you do, you gotta update your drivers. I don't know if I can trust Linux now. It's fine. It's all fine. Everything is fine about this. Hence why I'm still working on 4.14. Yeah. Like, I'm still in 4.14 because I have a whole bunch of driver code that I haven't gotten ported. Like, open source driver code, but it's just like the API has changed and I've had to move stuff around and other driver internals have changed, so I have to go learn that. And this is some of the reasons I moved to BSD. Yeah, that's the dream we all, that's the dream all Linux users have. Just retiring and moving to BSD. At least that's what I want to think. I don't want to think that people are like, yeah, this is good. This is fine. This is the right way to write drivers. We don't have Android phones running like Linux 3 that's open source, but we can't update the drivers and just port them to a new version. X new, greater than NT, greater than BSD, greater than Linux. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. Theoretically, yeah, but... NT's being closed source is just like, hell. Why am I running directory? Okay, we're gonna step until this code crashes. I don't want to knock NT on an architectural level because it seems okay, but at the same time... I don't know. I want a microkernel. That's my life. How's that installing? 42%. Alright. So I should probably explain what I'm doing here. Like Fuxia. Fuxia. My god. Cos said this word earlier today, and I tried to take a mental note of how he pronounced it, and I can't pronounce it. Fushika. Zircon? I haven't. Did they rename it? Yeah, the Zircon kernel. I haven't seen the Zircon kernel, but I've really liked the L4 set of kernels. Um, I haven't looked at Minix's kernel or Helen OS's kernel, but they're all they're all cool. They're all just message passing. It's fine. It's there is remarkably not that much to discuss about micro kernels from a developer's perspective, perspective like mine. Fusha. That's how it's said. Fusha. Okay, so here's here's the bane of my existence right now. Let me explain what I've been debugging. Okay, so <clears throat> I have some code that runs in the DOS small memory model with an exe where it has a separate data segment, but it doesn't run in tiny model, and you're probably thinking well, of course not, there's not enough room. But it looks like there is. I mean, I don't think I'm having any stack overflows. Malloc is fine. The code fits. And my debugging is now me just stepping through the code here, trying to see what happens. 
and it looks like it just hits some kind of interrupt loop. And because it's DOS, there's no documentation on the internet. And there's no DOS developers left alive, so... It'd be like, what do I do about it? 17... 12. It's definitely affected by the, the code size, I believe. As you can see, the stack pointer up here is A220, and I believe... Yeah, I have been reading the source. Um, I have the source, and nothing looks strange to me. But I'll go through it in a second once I hit the place where it crashes. Um, I don't believe this is... I think this is... I think the stack grows downwards and it stops at 60A2, and it starts at, uh, sorry, it stops at 9A76, but it starts at A260, so, from what I can tell, we barely have used any stack, because we're still initializing things. So I'm not sure what that, what that H is going on here. But I think, doesn't the heap in Whatcom use the stack? So I'm cautious about that. I might actually have to look at some of the symbols. But it happens during a call. I'm not sure which, and it seems to change. So let's keep pressing along. Is this it? 1712. Nope. Let's jump out of this one. Sixteen DB. Uh, I I forget where it happens. Because I uh, stripped down the executable some more, and that seems to have changed where it happens. Let's see. Okay, no, it's looping. I think it happens after it gets out of this loop. Although it does seem to be just writing to memory here. I actually do have the source code, I should pull that up. I've tried debugging this using Whatcom's debugger, but it's some interrupt related infinite loop, so it just kills the debugger. Come on. Okay, so 16 dB. So that looks like it was in a loop. And then it just hits illegal interrupt called 5. And then... Um, let me just pause it again. Oh wait, what? Let me hit the pause button. And then... The stack point is just like killed. Spurious interrupt five. It's an unhandled interrupt called five. Print soft interrupt spurious. I'm not sure. This doesn't happen um, using the small memory model. But as you can see, the stack is like, trashed. It just wants to loop here forever. Let's see how FreeDOS is going over here. Okay, buddy. So if we open up Whatcom's weird debugger, we can find out where that was. Uh, 
assembly. And because the debugger uses interrupts, it just gets trashed. So it was at 16 dB. Sometimes it has bound range exceeded. That makes sense because it was doing some weird instruction for the bound range. Oh, come on. I I don't know if Whatcom has like a... Can I just search for the address 16db? Nope. Can I go to the address? I don't understand anything that doesn't have Vim keen binds. Okay. Bound range exceeded, and that wouldn't be handled. I need like a turbo button for my keyboard. I don't know if that would help or hurt. 16 dB. Why are there so many hex numbers? Just have less hex numbers. Have less code. Okay. 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, D. D. Okay. So, it happens when it drives more packets. Okay. Less hex. Yeah. So I'm hit space, and I forgot where I was. That's okay. I remember what it said. Let's try searching drive packets, and it's not. It doesn't search it. Okay. Oh, my fa my life, my life. Okay. Well, let's just hit up DOSBox's debugger. Which is hidden behind the alt pause break button. So let's do breakpoint. I'm just gonna break on the packet interrupt and then set. You know what? I'll just leave what this. I don't care. Um. I don't know if the debugger would be prepared for me to just send it an interrupt from uh, DOSBox over here. Less hex. Yeah. I don't want hex in my life. F5. Okay, and we're gonna break point on code segment 16 dB. And this should be where it crashes, yeah? <clears throat> this is what save states are useful for, aren't they? Can I save state this? I don't know why I would think I could, but I wish I could. Box type. That sounds interestingly interesting enough for me to look at it later. Okay, so, um, yes, that freezes the debugger, I guess, if I have the menu open. Okay, so, card, it looks like the stack is intact. Let's just check the memory map here and see if... There's some kind of, like, pointer to the end of the heap. Heap. Number of heap begin. 
don't know if that's like... N heat check. Except check chunk. Heap walk. There's a lot of heap related things here. Just find open what comes source. And find how they do Malak. Because I hope I'm not like heap injecting code using the stack. That would be trash. And I don't want trash like that. I don't know why I don't have... Do I have a copy of uh, the source code of OpenWatcom? I feel like that's something I do have. Uh, no. So build source windows, build header, build wmake, contrib, extender. Hey, is that, in is that relevant? You'll want to do this in small data module models if you're using both malloc and fmalloc or halloc. What? Heap grow, grow the heap to the maximum size of 64k. You'll want to do this in small data models if you're using both of these. Um, that seems like a bad thing that you would want to do if you are using a tiny model like I am. Let's open up another terminal. Uh, no, that seems fine. Keep check. How do you... How does heap check work? Build sealer. F heap check. Okay. Heap. C. Alright, is this it? Alright. Big malik far heap. Heap grow. Heap set. Heap in it. Uh, N, S. There's just a lot of things here I don't understand. Tiny IO, small grow, N heap grow. Okay, so small data gets N heap grow. What does this do? It's good to see you. I have seen your Juki 2 channel here on Twitch. That's normal. That is a normal thing for people to say. Alright. Access and heat. Select space. Awesome content and great channel. Do more streams like programming a DOS bot. Yeah, let me read this properly. Awesome content and great channel. Do more streams like programming a DOS Twitch bot. Yes, I'm going to create custom emotes. Yeah, what site is it uh, malware.xyz? <laughs> P.S. Science Technology, probably the best or one of the best games of this oversaturated genre. Yeah, I know that feeling. Alright, let me ban this, this trash bot. I will not be making a bot like that. Account created June 9th, 2019. That's nice. Okay, so... Ban user. Is there like a report button? Yes, report. I'm gonna be a good citizen. Spam, malicious links, or bot accounts. I think this is a bot account. Tell us more. Uh, no. 
additional information is required. My dude, just check your logs. All right. Um, okay, I'll just paste this out of IRC. Okay, haha, <laughs> goodbye forever. Okay, that was a weird deviation. Okay, back to real problems. Heap grow, that's probably definitely what I want. So access and heap, current number of pages, current break. Okay, so it uses the break for memory allocation. Gotcha. And let's just read that out. That's 897E. All right. Why don't we just have Vim open? I was going to explain stuff. That's right. Okay. So. I forget how to show memory. Uh, yeah, D, D, S, sorry, that should be code segment for good practice. And that would be 897E. So the top of the break is C5, 6C, I think. That is a little bit worrying because that goes into stack space. But I don't quite understand if that is. That is little endian, so that's C56C. Hmm. That's not good. Is this the issue? It's just writing into my stack when it's copying buffers. I don't want that to be the issue. But don't make it like that. Okay. Is there a way to trace memory allocations? should just edit my own source code, shouldn't I? And malloc. So it sounds like it's trying to malloc part, uh, into the stack past the actual place on the stack of where I am. Which doesn't make much sense, because that sounds like something you would not want your malloc implementation to do. Um, is this N, N malloc? Alloc debug? <coughs> oh, that's right, because malloc's going to allocate pages and stuff. So, in theory, it could, it just might not be using that. It might be... This is a trash situation. Okay. <coughs> what else do we have? N heap beginning. Okay, so it's 89AE. Um, eight nine. What was it? A E. So 
so the heap begins at A260. Busy! Alright. No, it's fine. I'll get it in a minute. Uh, so the heap begins at A260 or 60A2. Little Indian, so it's A260. And that's, that's when the stack begins. Apparently. So that should be after the stack. So this sounds like it's not a problem at all. It's going from after the stack to um, wherever it is now. All right, that sounds like not the issue. So let's jump into this and see what happens. 259C. Spam, 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 spam. See where it's actually crashing because I jumped over it last time. I'm going to grab some food. Be right back. Enjoy this this DOS window. Can I make that full screen? I probably can. Ouch, that's gross, but okay. Weird flex, but okay. Be right back. I'm back. Let's do this. Oh no, I'm trapped. Oh no. Oh. Oh. Okay. What the hell did I just do? Ah, Control Alt G, View. Oh, that's right, because I'm also using. This is a VM too. So I have like two VMs nested. Alright, gotcha. Oh no, I type stuff. Alright. Control G to release grab. Oh no. Have I focused it wrong? Oh, Jesus Christ. No, my keyboard works. Alright, whatever. I guess it was full screen there. So let's see. Tracking along the. So it's only crashing at a specific time. So it's driving packets at the moment. I guess. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows for sure. Not me, the one person that should know. Is that a... okay. Is this where it... no. Okay. We can do this. Come on, computer, crash me. I was gonna say, I thought I would never say that, but I have not only said that multiple times, it has become a somewhat regular occurrence. I don't know how that fits into my life. Is it okay to just run OBS for like four days without using it? Because I just rebooted it before I started using it, just in case. It seems like a memory leak. It was chewing with like a ton of CPU, but I'm not sure if that's normal or not. Oh 
Oh my god. Okay, is this... My hand is actually dying from this. Two, five, nine, C. No, that's not it. C. What com had a cool debugger where it... Oh no, sorry, am I thinking of Insight? Insight had a cool debugger where it would just step through it at like intervals. Uh, I just realized that probably sounds like crap. Just me smashing my keyboard. Okay. So what I haven't been doing at the moment is looking at what the code is actually doing, which seems like something that could help. But I want to find out where it crashes. Please just crash. Is this hell? This feels like hell. I'm actually like... I feel like I'm powering the computer by pressing the button. Like it's a crank. Maybe we need crank powered computers. That would make people not run electron apps. Like, you have to crank your electron app for like half an hour just to run it for like 30 seconds. <laughs> you just heard your trigger word. I'm sorry, my boy. My friend. I shouldn't say my boy, but I've just been saying my boy all day because the guy who invented Lisp has been saying that in that one quote. So, yes. I'm sorry, person. Who the hell is talking about modern web shit applications? Me. I'm just wondering if you had to, like, physically exercise in order to use it. Do you think people would still use it? Like, in order to run it for 30 seconds, you have to... I don't know crank your electron thing for like 50 minutes no I don't know people like electron I don't want to code shame anyone but every time I try to use electron it just lags my computer I think we should force JavaScript developers to work on a native project for the amount of CPU time that web apps take up. Jesus Christ. What, do we want JavaScript developers working on native apps? That might be going too far. I feel like an absolute fool for pressing this button so much. I think this is an endurance test. If only there was an easier way. You know what? There actually probably is because I could bisect it by putting breakpoints on all the calls like that, right? I can just break on that by pressing space. No, I can't. Okay. I feel like I should probably read the manual and learn how to do that because that seems to be like an actual breakpoint there. Okay. Compare. None of that should cause any issues. DRXBP. This isn't GDB. This is DOSBox's debugger.
this isn't like a proper debugger, this is DOSBox's debugger. So I don't have much options here. Um, no, neither of those, it's just that going okay um it actually yeah it's a no it's not a cpu em emulator either it's uh <sighs> i don't know what to explain dosbox as other than some kind of mix between high level emulator and low level emulator because it mixes like DOS specific hacks into the actual instructions that it emulates. Okay, so we call that, it moves AX to 14, and it calls that. Then jump dot conditional plus 13. So that would be at 9C. Nineteen C, nineteen B, A C. Okay, so that's just a jump table. That's not going to cause any issues, I hope. Um. So in this case, it might just call. <laughs> Let's not do what. Create DOSBox. Was DOSBox a mistake? Oh, with the JavaScript stuff. Do I just end up writing really bad C++ and using MScript? Him? You mean like WebAssembly? That's... Hoping my eating noises don't show up on the microphone. If they do, I'm sorry, and I'll change the filter uh, amount. So that's going to call 304e. So let's do a breakpoint at 304e. 32e. Right. What's Apple? That looks suspicious. That looks something. That looks like something that could cause trouble. So let's just break point. Three o four e. Three two o b. Wait, three o four. Three o four e. No, it's back. Okay. jump 65 and 66 okay so we go to two wait no I should break there since it crashes when I sometimes call stuff let's just set breakpoints everywhere it's fine okay so 3132OB Let's break there. Three twenty B. And that calls that. Is that a call table? Oh, that's a headache. Okay. OB fifteen eighteen. Evil Tor user? What? What happened? What did I do? I'm sweating so hard. 
Oh no, I don't want a breakpoint at an int. Code segment 320B. I'm using a VPN in the VM. 3212 and 17. Yeah, I do use Tor. Uh, did something give that off in the stream? <coughs> do I have like Tor opened? Um, breakpoint. I do? Where? Or did you like just screen? I have hex check open with my nick exposed. Do I? Over here? At localhost? With man in the middle proxy? Is that is that what Tor means nowadays? Does that just confuse you more now? But I guess I did foul operationally by like saying, yeah, I use Tor. Yeah, Jukia on Freenode is me. And, uh, yeah, so if you figured out that I use Tor that way, that's pretty cool. I'm only just hanging around Freenode and uh, OFTC. Okay, so let's try this now. And now I'm in a completely different place. I thought I broke here. Do any hanging around on Freenode? I actually have no idea what I'm doing, and it scares me. In general though, Tor is pretty good. I also have like a VPN uh, for this. But generally I tend to favour Tor because it's much harder to snoop on if you're operating a Tor node. Not saying I don't trust commercial VPN providers, but at the same time it's like if you can deal with the slowdown and the speed, then it's good. It's also like questionable how much of the network is controlled by who, so I'm not sure how much that matters. 
and other issues that it's free and it's like not trash where do you lurk on free note and OFC anyway cool supposed to be crashing but it's not in fact it's starting to look like this is some kind of infinite loop actually let's just see what the conditional is so we're at here let's step over it Compare byte, um, if it's equal, then we jump down to by 3 to E8. It jumps down and down and down. It doesn't jump, where does it jump back? Let's just see. Huh? Oh, okay. I mostly hang around the open WRT uh, scene channel. has di with dx and it calls that function to check what the hell kind of prologue is that you know what it'd be good if I actually had debugging symbols for this I do. Actually, I know where this is. This is the driving packets. So that would be in packet.cpp. Send packet, packet in it. It might be in utils actually. Maybe I should just rep for it. That seems like something that a normal person that knows how to program would do. Grepping. TCP drive packets too. I already have that open somewhere. Is it here? Okay. So it goes through the. Oh, this is a. Oh, this is a long. This is a long one. We're in a loop, so let's see.
you know what, if I use um, the actual graphical debugger and I just don't have a crash, that would work well. So I'll just jump to where drive packets is. Go check over this. Yeah, good job, Fridos. CD DOS dev bot. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's debug that function. See where that gets us in life. Okay, drive packets. Where are we crashing, my dude? Where are we dropping? There. Okay, well, that's not very useful. Okay. Let's view the assembly, please. And let's zoom the window. It crashes there. That's different to before. Why don't I try stepping in then? So what was it? Um, data, no wait, window, um, assembly, control C, code, functions, Yep, I'm gonna break on that. I'm getting way too good at that. Okay. What's the run thing? Trace into, that's F8. So that checks the stack overflow there, which is good. And let's step into this. So it's in this function somewhere. What? What?
it crashes when it shifts left because of a range issue. Okay. So. It shifts it. Uh, let's just quiet you for a minute. Um, interrupt five, shift left. Exception handling. Bound rage exceeded. Okay, person from 2005. Do you know the answer? Shifting left, that would explain why it just doesn't happen consistently whenever I debug. Yeah, 2008, that's, that's as good as it's going to get. So, I would like to see what the registers are for AX. Now, is it possible that this was saved? And if I hit control pause... Sorry, oh, pause, it'll tell me. 517E. Time to procrastinate another three hours. Uh, good luck, have fun. 517E, shift left by two. Shift left shouldn't cause that many issues, right? Especially because it's not consistent. But, if it's time-based, then that would explain why it's not consistent. But, Comment that out. I'm only here for like another half hour. Maybe you should like not procrastinate. Maybe you should go on a job. A uh, jog. What was I searching for? 
delay. Uh, oh, I forgot the word. But it used timer. The sunlight burns. Hmm, are you sure? Are you sure that's not just a vampirism or something? Overdue at. Okay, so apparently. This code is causing issues. So, what if I just add one? Five hours past my 5 a.m. bedtime. Um, yeah, just stay awake for the rest of the day. You can do it. See if this somehow compiles. Hmm. So that wasn't the error. Who would have guessed? What if I just remove it and I make it a busy loop, huh? That would show me if it's just some kind of timer issue. I'm just gonna start bisecting the code. Um, you know what? Drive no packets, no more packets. Yes, I'll write to it, thank you very much. I guess I could do tedious driver stuff, yeah. Riding drivers when you're tight is a definite good thing to do. QM, you, you're slow, and that makes me unhappy. But I understand. You're not riding drivers? So what's the driver stuff then? Because it sounds like it has drivers involved. An anti-kernel emulator for Linux. Um, uh, why? Unlike previous bullshit attempts, think NDS wrapper NTFS, setting up an MS ABI compliant environment. They have an ABI. and using MSVC to compile modules. So do you mean like a driver compatible environment for Linux? It's going to be binary compatible with Windows drivers. That's interesting. I completed the system V to MS ABI stuff over a year ago. Nice. Everything else has been, oh, it's abstraction. So is this like a uh, thing you're working on for a company?
you know how awful the Linux kernel is to write it for. I have only briefly, I have only graced um, getting existing drivers to work with newer kernel versions. Imagine writing a generic C++ section layer on top of that with a foreign compiler that can't read kernel headers. Wow, that, uh... Oof, that sounds like everything that I would not want to do. Without an STL or anything. Um... No, that just sounds like, uh... Hell. For fun? Hmm. For a minute. Oh, to reverse drivers. That's pretty cool. For a brief minute, the thought flashed in my mind. Why don't you, you why don't you work with React OS? And then I was like, you know what? I tried to install React OS like ten times, and it never worked. So they have bigger problems. Also, React OS isn't Linux, so you lose all the tooling. Port DirectX to Linux. Why, though? What the hell is happening here? What the actual LMFAO is happening? This isn't what I wanted. In fact, I'm just going to busy loop it here and just see, just see what happens. Gams, of course. You know what? That's cool. Anything interesting like that is going to end up finding some kind of use of its own. Linux graphics drivers suck. Um, do they? Would be fun to poke around with drivers within an environment you control. Yeah. That would be very interesting for, well, anti-cheat and malware analysis. So, I'm starting to think this is a timer interrupt issue. So what if I just go to my bot and I edit my bot code and instead of connecting, I just busy loop. And if that causes issues, then it's probably a timer issue. Proprietary drivers, MSV compiled modules, not entirely GPO compliant, DirectX, what other bridge do I have to burn for you Linux guys to hate me? I don't know. Um, I think you have to like, talk about Linux things. Basically, the thing with Linux people is that they're, or well, being one myself, is that they're very like, inward focused. So, um, they only care about the Linux ecosystem. So you have to like, 
I found a meme on Reddit that would piss off the entire community. Oh, what is it? It's a... It, this is... A timer issue. I think. What if I don't hook? What if... The current ticks or something. What if this is just being bullshit? Um, yeah, no, the, the way to really piss off the Linux community is to first, um, talk about how Linux is made. That's the thing. So it's like, uh, developer drama. So, one really good way to piss off Linux's, Linux people is to talk about like init systems of all things. They hate it. This one weird trick, you can just talk about init systems and it will derail any Linux chat. Like, you can have a bunch of people that use Proton, Wine, you know, Discord. Everything proprietary, but if you like, just say, so, you guys like system D. The chat just explodes. It's amazing. So it's like a really inward focused, why not offensive GPL memes? Uh, I don't think there's like a universal feeling about GPL that much. That's only like a specific target. If you want to really upset Linux users, you have to talk about things that they feel, uh, things that they don't have control over. You think this would really upset people? I'm just going to open it up on stream. And if it's that uh, comic where it's just like got the comparison, it's got like the Duke Nukem guy in it, this is going to be good. No. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that really upsets me about that is like the autistic part. But, nah. Eh. Richard Storman's kind of a bad meme, and. I don't know, it's weird because the only thing that I've seen consistently upset people is like System D. Because it's something that involves nuance and discussion and understanding, while the GPL can kind of be summed up to a general uh, set of rules. Uh oh. I like system day. Any opinion you have on system D is gonna be wrong though, so it just be like that, you know. It's good to have opinions on things and feelings about them. But it's like weird when you start posting on Reddit about it. Okay, so what I think might be happening here is timer stud is getting called twice. And when the timer hits, it's just going to run itself, right? You just hate Linux everything, and yet you lose and let. Sorry, let me try and do the meme. You claim to hate Linux, 
and yet you use Linux. What's uh, what's up with that, mate? going on there? Using Windows to create an NT emulator. I'm a big Linux fanboy. Yeah, but that's the thing. Linux is just a tool, right? That's why containers and servers and all that use Linux, because it's a it's a tool that's useful for that niche. There's a lot of open source operating systems and there's a lot of closed source operating systems. And Linux is one of them. And uh, it's useful in a lot of ways. Why are you not, why are you doing this to me? Okay. Um, Let's say I don't have an old tick handler. Because I probably don't in DOSBox land. Oh, is this what's happening? It's assuming there's an old tick handler. Free and functional Ethernet drivers. Yeah, what else does a server need? Um, probably, like, security, which Linux is... <sighs> Linux, Linux is a, oh, I'm, I'm biased, I'm biased with uh, Unix in general, I'm kind of anti-Unix, just throw everything into the kernel and shout at people on the mailing list, yeah. Oh shit, did I fix it? No. I didn't. But imagine if I did. That would have been cool, right? Uh, so, hooking the timer is causing issues. But we You don't need security. You just don't break user mode. Just don't break user mode. Um, what? Like, the Unix and Windows security models are just generally... Yeah. You know, don't... Uh, it's just a lot of issues. Discretionary access control. And then, to try and avoid that, you use SE Linux on Linux, and that's like, oh. Okay, so let's see. That doesn't help. Is it possible that the ticks are overflowing and that's causing an issue? Let's see. I'm referenced to how insane Linux kernel guy is about never changing syscall slash fs behavior even if the previous implementation was wrong. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm on the fence about that. Um, because on one hand, I do like the idea of writing assembly, but on the other hand, you get so many benefits from just having uh, the ability to break your ABI and shim it with C code or something like that. Like, maybe we could have had just one clone call. Or like... But then again, you could just think about system calls as being shimmed in the kernel side, so... I don't know. You spent an entire day writing process APIs for Windows or Linux, because on Linux you have like S trace and all that. Okay, you know what actually really 
really uh, pisses me off. Um, <laughs> like, it was kernel abstraction. I don't want to think about Linux threads anymore. Well, I'm sorry, but they're not threads, they're tasks. I go unhandled interrupt court 6. What are you doing, interrupt? Okay, I think there's two issues happening there with the timer interrupt. Um, it really bugs me that the syscall numbers, which are completely arbitrary and up to Linux, are just different across architectures. Like, why? Why would you do that? I don't understand. Hayspin.com slash dnpgazpe Fight me. What's this? Let's see. You have a process. You have an object. You have a uh, thread. Th threads. Is process as process get parent this looks pretty sane to me uh, I mean <sighs> it looks sane to me but it looks like hell to implement I don't know how Linux handles processes. I know internally it is like everything's a task. Unhandled interrupt called six. Is it is this the code that's annoying me here? I don't understand. I don't understand. Is it calling timer stop? What if I do this? I'm just going to make two separate changes at once and if that fixes it, I'm going to assume the second change is what fixed it. I see you've got a uh, license.txt. Surely that's... Uh, I don't know. I didn't recompile it. I'm an idiot. That does look like solid C++ there. The only thing I would probably change is to use uh, specific uh, size types, but that just may not matter. Get drive, get work, get drive. Welcome to Linux. You can use the C drive. Why are you doing this to me, Toss? I don't understand. Okay, what if I just don't install the timer tick handler? Alright. I feel very close to the solution here. You went to use the use for PIDs because... Oh! No! Oh! PIDs are such bullshit. Um... Uh, you just might want to type def that or something. That's just my opinion because... 
Linux does it. And I'm sure one day Linux is going to be like, kids are now just namespaced and stuff like that. Well, they are. Layer between modules and the Linux kernel just uses the largest int type. Nice. Did I run wmake? Yes, I did. Okay, so not setting the timer. Lib OS types use unt as an unsigned int type if the actual structure type is known. Is that NT stuff? Alright. Yeah, it seems sane. You can't read the Linux headers with MSVC. Yeah, oh, that sounds so painful. You sound like you're in so much pain. All right, void interrupt far timer tick handler. <sighs> so timer tick handler is killing me. What if I just like do an if zero there? Maybe Whatcom will compile the other code? That looks like it might use a different calling convention. I don't know, I feel like if that's messed up then other interrupts are going to be messed up. And I don't want that to be my life. VA start timer.cpp. What did I do? What if I do that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, one thing I did see is that in the packet driver, it did in fact have, where's the interrupt set vector? For the extraction layer, I directly utilize my portable type library to explicitly read from the kernel structure type get number UN32 pointer, etc. That's pretty good. good. I haven't seen that kind of code before. Static void far interrupt timer tick handler. And let's just do nothing here. And what do we do with disable ints? Uh, how do we set uh, city bar. Oh, so it sets the, uh, oh, that might not be working. Oh, who cares? Let's just see how it goes. Why not? No working fires. Nope, um, what the hell just happened? No reference to the symbol timer tick handler. 
Why? What happened? Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. So let's assume that that's the thing that I need to do. Timer old tick handler has not been... Okay, well, I guess I'm not doing that then. Fine, whatever. I feel kind of bad now because I've just had free DOS installing and it's not, it's not happening. Typed task macro file. What do you mean by that? DOS set back to interrupt far void. So it would be void that I want this to be, I guess. Defined type member to int32, int32 on RQ on RW. That's interesting. Unhandled interrupt call at six. Okay, I'm getting like mind blown. that this time in truck is not working. Hang on a second. Did I download like the C library? I have a feeling that I'm using the wrong function prototype. Get defines a get on RW and set on RW function within the I task where I remember our auto change. Interesting. So it looks like you're using a lot of reflection kind of stuff there. Okay, set back to where are you at? Okay, so this code seems to be okay. But it looks like the actual intro part is messing up, which seems like I should be using a set vect or something else. There's no mention. Okay, so it must be in a different manual. Uh, uh, programmer's Guide. C++ car for reference. C library reference. Yeah, it wouldn't be in C library reference. C Guide. My dude, Freedos, did I hit something to pause you or something? What is happening? Oh, poor little Freedos. Only one day from retirement. Set vect. Am I running set vect? In? Yeah, I'm running set vect in all places. I might have to prototype some stuff. just seems like something's terribly wrong here. No set back to there. I believe it's... DOS set fact. Alright. It must be in P guide.
Interrupt number, avoid interrupt. Timer, old tick handler. Is it possible that it is not including the segment offset? Because if we go here. We have like function pointers and stuff, so receiver. But far would handle that, wouldn't it? Tiny memory model set effect. I feel like there's just going to be some F set effect. Why is that not loading properly? See, this looks like it's something useful. Let's head on over to here. Time a tick handler. Is it getting cast to be a near function? Uh, okay. Set back. Okay, well that is actually useless. Let's go to here and we're gonna sweet header, our grip, set back. DOS set back. Is set back being wrapped? What if I just do DOS set back instead? Would that help? Uh, where's my DOS box? I don't know why I had the urge to port the DirectX subsystem to Linux and add KWIN slash Waylon support. Dude, why? I'm asking you too. You'd like me to do kernel mode setting for that, wouldn't you? I thought about it, so I'm just gonna do it. You know, I wish I had that conviction. I wish I could just decide to do things. That's what you've been doing for over a year? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay, sec. Unhanded interrupt called six. Mm. I want a solid and somewhat portable layer I can build an NTOS emulator on top. You know what? That's good. That sounds cool. Eight. Okay, so 
why is it 1C here? So I should hook into 1C. Does DOSBox do 1C? What if we just set it... What if we just be sneaky and we set it to 8? What if I do that? DirectX drivers running on ZNU would be the biggest troll to MS. Written with a dollar sign. Ah, uh, I don't know what ZNU is. That's the, that sounds like the Mac kernel. Yeah. Isn't like the open source uh, ZNU stuff basically dead though? Okay, moment of truth. How much is this going to mess my system up? A legal interrupt called sex. Why? What did I do? I feel like... I feel like... Life is unfair. Yeah. That's what, that's what it feels like. Okay, so let's just ignore that and then we'll see if our control C hooks work. Maybe all interrupts are broken. Wouldn't that be a thing? Exynos 4903.1021.2 for Mac 10.40.1 is the latest archive available. Yeah, I really wish they wouldn't just dump archives, but I suppose it's better than nothing. Okay. Ah, oh, right. That wouldn't make sense. Uh. What if I just, on the interrupt, print stuff? Oh, wait. Wow, control break detected. So, what if I just do... Control break detected there. I have to like end the stream in like two minutes though, because I've got to feed my dog. My dog. Dogs need food it turns out, now, who would have thought? Expensive food. Yeah, so it doesn't look like any interrupts are working. What the actual F? Oh, well, not control break detected. Okay. And then I should actually just probably move that back. That makes more sense. W make that? I feel like I did okay. Yeah, that doesn't look like that interrupt is working very well either, the control C one. Huh. So I guess the the issue is that 
interrupts or not? Oh, wait, I'm an idiot. I can't press control back, so I've been pressing control C. Control C. Nope, nothing. So control break detected. And then it loops while it's not doing control break. Ah. So To fuck basically. What if I manually send the interrupt? Can I do that? So, what interrupt would that be? Hex 23. Um, help, how I send the interrupt. Interrupt 23. Nope, I typed a hex thing. Okay, interrupt 23. Running. Um, what? No? So that's broken too. Yeah, <laughs> poor doggo not getting food. Yeah, um, so what have we learned today? What have we learned today while I wrap up? Oh, FreeDOS is installed. Yes, please. Um, so we've learned that the hard disk, uh, the hard disk for FreeDOS is, it's not, uh, it doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have a bootloader? I don't know what's happened there. But I can tell you that whatever has happened is not good, I guess. E drive. So it was in it would be in D drive. Yeah. What's E drive? Uh let's just quickly have a look. D drive. Uh, maybe I have to make them bootable. Set active. Yes, active. Display partition about. Okay. Um, and then I just guess I'll do a shutdown for that. Um, yeah. We've learned that FreeDOS is a bitch. I haven't used FreeDOS yet. But I've been using DOSBox, and I think the thing that I've learned is that um, Whatcom does weird things. And I don't want those weird things to happen. No active petition found. If I remove the USB stick, would that help? Anyway, I better get going. See you later. Make sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell. I don't know. Follow me on Mastodon. I'm like at, uh, I don't know what my Mastodon is. Social.txt. Is this it? No. T 
PC NCS. Sorry, I forgot the S there. Dear God. Is it just you here? Yeah, follow me here. That's cool. Later, skaters. Thanks for joining the stream. I don't know what else to say. Remember, computers are cool. That's, that's my motto now. Bye, said I lot. Bye, Nearing Counter. <laughs> Bye, everyone.